Welcome to the video on rough cut capacity planning. In this video, we will look at some of the fundamentals of rough cut capacity planning. Let's consider this prospective MPS that is master production schedule. As per the information given to us that is a starting on hand of 35 order policy that is one time ordering or manufacturing of 60 units and lead time of two weeks for manufacturing we have put together this MPS plan where 60 units need to be received in week 3 similarly 60 units need to be received in week 5 and 60 units need to be received in week 7 this we have calculated based on the forecast the customer orders and the inventory on hand. Now, based on the lead time given, we then said that, okay, we need to start manufacturing each of these quantities two weeks in advance. So we are manufacturing st or starting to manufacture in week one, week three and week five. However, we never checked if we have enough resources and capacity to produce that much in the manufacturing facility. So do we have enough machinery or labor available to be able to manufacture 60 units in week one? We never checked that. So after developing a prospective MPS, we need to check if the MPS is feasible in terms of the available resources like labor, machinery, supplier capabilities and warehouse space etc. This process is known as the rough cut capacity planning. And it gives only a rough approximation of the actual resource requirements. Now let us look at the definition in different words. So rough cut capacity planning aims at evaluating a tentative or prospective MPS with respect to available capacity. Ideally, the purpose of rough cut capacity planning is to ensure that a feasible MPS is provided as an input to MRP plan. So we know that once the MPS is finalized, then it becomes an input to the MRP plan. So if the MPS itself is not feasible, that means you don't have the capacity to produce what you are planning, then your MRP is also not going to be feasible. So first, there is a rough cut capacity planning done to ensure that the MPS is feasible so that later on there are no challenges. Now let us look at an example to understand the overall process. Let's say that the MPS requirement for a product is as I have mentioned in this table. So these are periods, first week, second week, third week and so on. And this is the MPS quantity to be received during these weeks. Now to manufacture this product, two work centers are required. Let's say M1 and M2. So work center M1 and work center M2 are required to manufacture this product. Now, let's say after calculating the capacity required for M1 and M2 in hours per week, we get the requirement as follows. So this is the hours per week required for manufacturing the quantity as per MPS plan. So M1 is required for 26.4 hours per week 
in order to manufacture 80 quantities in week 1. Similarly, M2 is required for 30.4 hours in a week to manufacture 80 quantities in week 1. And similarly, I have noted down the requirement of these two work centers each week in order to meet the capacity required to manufacture the MPS quantities given. Now, it has been established that the available capacity of M1 and M2 is 40 hours per week. So, each of these machines is available only for 40 hours per week and this is the requirement of each of these machines per week. Now, as you can see, machine 2 is slightly overloaded in weeks 7 and 8. So, instead of the available capacity of 40 hours per week, the requirement of this machine for week 7 and week 8 is 41.8 hours respectively. Hence, action needs to be taken by the planner to reduce the load on these two weeks or increase the capacity of these two weeks. So, this is how it's very simple analysis is done based on the required capacity and the available capacity and whatever is the overload or underload according to that the planner can change the plan. Now let us look at another example to understand this concept. Now this report shows the capacity requirement of a filling line by time period. So you can see here there are weeks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The available capacity is at 80 hours. Now the available capacity is derived from the capacity that the line has shown historically. So even though the maximum capacity could be much more, however, based on the historical data, some time would have been lost because of some of the other activities. So available capacity is set to 80 hours. So as mentioned earlier, the vertical lines show the required capacity to meet the MPS plan while the line at the top shows the available capacity. Now you can notice the overload like this here and the underload that is this here for each of the weeks. For example, in uh, week 4, 100 hours of capacity is needed while historically the filling line has been able to produce for 80 hours per week. So there is an overload of 20 hours. Now the planner can choose any of the ideas to fix the situation. Some of them could be run the filling line over a weekend. Now it can be either uh, in the form of two shifts of eight hours each on Saturday plus a four hours additional on Sunday or any other combination. The second option could be move 20 hours of load to week 3. So as you can see week 3 is underutilized by this 20 hours. So this 20 
our capacity can be utilized from week three. Now there could be other ideas also like offload work to other equipment in the plant. Other option could be subcontract the work out to another company with the same type of filling equipment. Now there could also be a situation that none of the above plans is feasible. In that case, one of the options is to change the MPS plan. Although it is an undesirable situation. So we saw the basic fundamentals of rough cut capacity planning. I just want to lay out this rough cut capacity planning process in terms of the overall production planning process, like where does it lie? So we have the sales and ops planning at the highest level where we'll do the high level resource requirement planning. Then we have the MPS and we just now in this video saw the rough cut capacity planning and when the material requirement planning is done the detailed capacity requirement planning is done which is also known as the CRP so these are the various planning relationships which we are going to see in different videos on this topic